Storm Chasing. It is the 20th of the 2nd, 2015, and this video is being produced at 4.30 p.m. It should be online by 5 p.m. Okay, what a, an incredible day of weather it has been for Central Queensland and South East Queensland. We have seen severe tropical cyclone Marsha, Category 5 system, cross the coast between St Lawrence and Shoalwater and track down and cut just between Rockhampton and Yapoon. Okay, so Yapoon did technically dodge a bit of a bullet. They were just outside some, some much stronger winds there. However, the town has sustained some destructive damage. Rockhampton has fared reasonably well with um, damage in that region as well. We are seeing some pictures emerging from Rockhampton of some severe flash flooding in the region now. Just to be expected when you have a look at the amount of rainfall, high intensity rainfall occurring around the centre of the tropical cyclone. She is still currently a Category 3 and slowly weakening, tracking, according to radar, south-southeast. So she's taking a little bit more of a um, southeasterly track along the coast. This, in my opinion, will help her to maintain strength in a weakening, in a slower weakening fashion, okay, because she's closer to the coast, drawing in abundant moisture from, from offshore. She still has wind... Sustained winds to from 125 to 165 k an hour gusts. So the next areas that are really under a cyclone alert and should batten down are Mount Larkham, Calliope, Gladstone, Biloela, and further down the coast as she tracks. She will weaken as she goes, but currently still a very strong system. In fact, a severe system, a severe tropical cyclone. I will move on. Remember, I'm doing these non-pre-recorded, so I'm going to flick over to Brisbane and have a look at the current radar there. You can see the trough line is extending from the Sunshine Coast just offshore now from the Gold Coast to Brisbane. However, the rain is still being cranked onshore. We saw earlier today very heavy falls through parts of Brisbane, particularly North Brisbane and Caboolture. For your information, Caboolture has had 337 millimetres of rain in 24 hours. So there's a 300 total already, and we've still got XTC Marsha to come. I'll get on to that. Other areas, these areas have experienced some flash flooding, um, river and creek flooding. There are flood warnings out for various rivers, creeks and streams from central Queensland and southeast Queensland. So that was all the way from Sunshine Coast down into North Brisbane. And even the Gold Coast has also experienced some heavy rainfall through the um, hinterland areas and coastal regions. But the focus was up here. I will move on and show you or go through with you the hazards of the um, cyclone. So we have... The hazard's very destructive core still of Tropical Cyclone Marsh with gusts to 170s moving southwest of Gladstone. So Glass Gladstone will still get damaging, possibly destructive winds. You remember that these, these destructive winds, okay, so we go on to 160k is expected further south and in inland areas across the Capricorni and Burnett districts today, including Gladstone. I just spoke to mum there. She said that her manhole cover in her house was starting to lift up. Um... And she's getting a little bit concerned there. The winds are really starting to pick up now, as you'd expect, given the um, close proximity of the cyclone to Gladstone. Abnormally high tides are being experienced today. I earlier recorded um, inundation of low-lying areas through Maroochydore on the high tide, coupled with those heavy rain and flash flooding. It exuberated flooding through low-lying areas of the Sunshine Coast. Highest tides of the year, people... Living in these areas locally will be affected to take measures to protect their property, such as sandbags. We're seeing sandbag distribution points all the way down the coast now, and including in Brisbane. Just for those people who feel as though they live in a low-lying area and they want some sort of protection against some floodwaters, should they occur. Dangerous surf is, is expected from Yapoon to Double Island Point tonight as the cyclone moves south. 
there is a severe weather warning current. These are two systems, trough initially in southeast Queensland and the cyclone, XTC cyclone Marsha to come. She's moving south near Rocky and a trough extends from the cyclone to the southeast coast. That's what's given Brisbane and Sunshine Coast heavy rain and just the general area rain. The trough and approach of, Mar of Marsha is a Producing heavy rain, likely damaging wind gusts, wide bay burnout, southeast coast districts today. Currently, obviously heavy rain. This was earlier at 2.29. Sunshine Coast to Gold Coast, extending inland to parts of Darling Downs and Granite Belt later today or tonight, and obviously into tomorrow. Heavy rain may lead to flash flooding, some 24-hour totals in excess of 300, which we've already seen, with more to come. You remember back on Sunday afternoon, some five days ago, I did forecast up to 600, and they are starting to come off. All right, damaging wind gusts to 90 k's. All levels again, we've still got big tides. Flooding, we've got minor flooding in the Stanley and Mary, or moderate flood warning for, with minor flooding in the Maroochy and Malula rivers. From that heavy rain this morning, which is expected to continue, there's a flood watch out for all rivers, creeks and streams, Wider Bay, Burnett, South East Coast, Darling Downs, Granite Belt, Districts, Warwick, Gold Coast, Toowoomba, Lockyer Valley, Ipswich, Brisbane, Caboolture, Sunshine Coast, Kingaroy and Gympie. I will go on shortly and we'll have a look around that Bundaberg district as well to see what's happening there because they're not really mentioned as a town, so I'll make sure that I mention you guys. Let's have a look at the... NCAR Marsha track map forecast. We've got one, two, three, four computer models that agree of a track towards initially now currently to the southeast. So any one of these tracks she may follow. Obviously a majority of the models put her inland a little bit through Wide Bay Burnett and then straight out over about Brisbane Sunshine Coast. So track models agree on basically what's going to happen with Tropical Cyclone Marsha currently tonight and into tomorrow. And then she does some sort of wobble bobble back up here offshore. That will be the remnants of the cyclone as a low level circulation centre. So not a cyclone out here. No doubt that will still crank on some very big swells onto the, um, onto the coast. Let's have a look at these rainfall totals. The 24 hours to 9 o'clock this morning. This was last night. Rainfall that occurred last night. Beachmere, 150. Burpengary, 150. Gold Coast, 100. Coolum, 165. So you can see all the red over 100s. That was to 24 hours to 9 o'clock this morning. And then since then, from North Brisbane, Brisbane CBD sort of area, to the north, go away, we've had further falls of 162. These are starting to really add up. We are seeing road closures in these areas um, and river flooding, river creek stream flooding. Understandable, 300 mil. The Brisbane River catchment is out here in the Esk, Somerset, Brisbane Valley region. You can see that they have had light falls. So they're saying that the Brisbane River Wyvernhoe Dam catchments are safe even when XTC Marsha moves through. Although your smaller rivers, creeks and streams closer to the coast or possibly ones over inland, depending on how much they get, could suffer some flooding. All right, so there's your river totals and rainfall totals. Let's have a look at the rainfall forecast. This is for today, which ends tomorrow. So you can see the heavy heavy falls to two to three hundred mil have occurred or are occurring through central Queensland districts from Rocky to Gladstone, and then it tends to taper off a little bit, no doubt, as as Marsha weakens, but she still tracks down into southeast Queensland. There's the trough that's been delivering us the rainfall today with forecast totals up to 150 mil today. We've seen them; they are starting to exceed them. And also down into northeast New South Wales. We do have flooding down there as well, heavy rain, road closures. Not forgetting about you guys down here. Tomorrow, rainfall forecast totals from about Bundy South, 100 mil. 
possibly higher, 200 local falls. And into northeast New South Wales, when that low tracks out, it flicks up the back and cranks a lot of weather back onto um, northeast New South Wales. For areas from Gladstone south to, to the Gold Coast, our weather is rotating from onshore, from the ocean and coming in this way. Works like a clock. So wherever that centre is, it's rotating like a clock. It'll drag weather around the southern side onto the downs and through Wide Bay, Burnett, inland districts like that. You can see that there. Let's have a look at the Bureau of Met access model. We'll play out the low, or currently that would be Tropical Cyclone Marsha. We will scroll through on an automation from Friday at 2 o'clock or 5 o'clock now, right out through until Monday. I will let this play and we'll talk through it. Those blue and purple regions, the blue regions are three-hour rainfall totals to 50 mil. The purple regions are three-hour rainfall totals to 100 mil. So we could get totals up to two or 300 mil yet from XTC Marsha. You can see the purple areas over a three-hour period, and they double up on some of them. Okay, let's move on to the GFS high-resolution model, which I talk to you guys a lot about, and I show you guys because it is a very good model when it comes down to picking these systems. It, is only, it has only recently gone to high resolution. It has doubled the capability to what it used to have. So I've used this model for 10 years. 4 p.m. Friday. It's pretty close, isn't it? At where it's putting tropical cyclone Marsha. These are low level winds, about 5,000 feet. Let's follow it through. It's tracking south. 7 7 p.m. Sorry about the screen. 7 p.m. It tracks further south. 10 p.m. It tracks further south again towards Mundubra. It's still a cyclonic system. 1 a.m. Saturday morning. It's starting to lose a little bit of wind strength and it's in its full clockwise and it's starting to produce or continue to produce strong winds on its eastern, southeastern, and southern flanks or quarters. 4 a.m. on Saturday morning, she is located pretty much around that Mundubra region, dragging all this moisture in and rain from Bundaberg, so from Gladstone, Bundaberg, yes, you will be impacted, heavy rain, strong winds. Flooding is highly dependent on how much rainfall falls in the catchments. Flash flooding is likely of smaller creeks, rivers and st or streams, and roadways, yards, and that sort of thing. It's not going to be a very pretty 24 hours from Gladstone south to New South Wales. I can reassure you that, and extending inland from to, to Room to Gundawindi possibly. Definitely elevated areas of the Darling Downs. Very strong winds there. 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, Saturday morning. She's slowing, but she's still tracking. Now starting to turn a little bit more southeast. You can see the rotational winds dragging that rain onshore, flicking it back around to the southern of western parts of Waibo Burnett, northern parts of Darling Downs. 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. I'm confident with these maps because they're within close range. These maps go out to 10 days. Um, we have a look at them sometimes, but we like to keep things within close range, maximum of five, preferably three. 1 p.m. Saturday, she is tracking pretty much straight over the top of Brisbane. Okay, what you have to remember now, she's just an XTC. She's a low pressure system. A majority of those destructive, well, those destructive winds have now weakened from the system. Back here, probably somewhere around Mundubra, inland from Bundy, would expect the destructive winds ease back to damaging. And damaging winds would be possible anywhere south of that line, all the way down to the Darling Downs, southeast coast, northeast New South Wales. Damaging wind gusts are any winds that exceed 90 kilometres an hour. She could still produce those along with heavy rain. Flash flooding, likely. All right, 4 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. She's still tracking out over Brisbane. The winds will shift. 
they will shift pretty suddenly, you'll notice, from the northeast and the southeast and the south, around there like that, and they'll come back from the other way in a calmer manner. But the initial strong winds are on the southern and western side. You can see it in the shading. 10 p.m. on Saturday night, she's offshore from the Gold Coast, still whipping up strong winds back on shore over southeast Queensland. Okay, and, and by that stage, most likely reducing back to showers because it's drier on this side. Heavier rain would be offshore by now. Okay, so that's about all I have for you. The current radar is showing the surface trough still producing rain, some areas of locally heavy rainfall still coming in from the northeast. All our winds are coming in from the northeast and southeast Queensland at the moment until the arrival of XTC Marsha. You can see her there in screen. There's her centre near Mount Larkham, just west of Mount Larkham now, tracking towards the southeast. She is then expected to turn slightly south, come out in over Mundub Regainda. So all these areas here, Monto, Jinjin, Bundaberg, Childers, Bigenden, Gainda, Mundubra, Proston, Mergen, Kingaroy, Nanango, all those areas, Gympie, Tinkham Bay, Harvey Bay, Fraser Island's getting pretty wild tonight, onshore winds and rain, down into further, down into southeast Queensland, Toowoomba, Pittsworth, Mulmerran, flicking right around here like that. These radar images are brought to you by WeatherZone. I'm a membership, a membership on WeatherZone. I'm a WeatherZone Pro member. Um, big plug for those guys. They produce amazing products through WeatherZone, which HSC uses religiously day in, day out. These radar, radar images are, are fantastic. Right, that's enough for me, people. Brace yourselves. Oh, we do have, just a reminder to all those new followers on HSC, we have the Higgins Storm Chasing app available for Android and Apple. It has various radar and lightning links, rainfall forecast links, your forecast there, HSC forecasts and videos, that's where this will go, onto those, forecasts and cyclones. The bomb warnings are one click away. Bang, into Queensland, tap, warnings are there. The full complementary of warnings, not just for Queensland, but for Australia. Last night, I added the emergency alert tab, which takes you straight through to the disaster management site where emergency alerts are posted, which we post to Facebook. It's all on this app. Notifications are sent. Push notifications straight to your phone. Been very busy sending those out. Apologies if you've been in an unaffected area receiving notice. I've been doing that purposely so that if you receive notifications to your phone, I'm doing it because of this is a severe system and you're then able to at least share that out or contact family and friends based off what we're sending you as well. A lot of them are in line with the bomb warnings along with our own identified problem areas or high risk areas such as the Sunshine Coast to Brisbane today. It fell under a severe weather warning. However, we also issued a push notification for a heightened risk area from Sunshine Coast to Brisbane once we identified extra heavy rain falling and flash flooding occurring and all those sorts of things. Alerts for the cyclone, heads up for Gladstone and that sort of thing. It's all been cranked out straight to your phone. All you have to do is enable notifications in your settings and GPS or location services so that this app can track you and send it to you if I start to geo-target notifications, which I can, so I might just geo-target a notification up here. It's a very good tool. We've had a lot of positive feedback from our app. I might geo-target bound area of Wide Bay Burnett for Gladstone and send them an, an, a, um, an emergency alert or a cyclone alert. Everyone else won't get it. But for now, I've been blanket sending them, okay? Thanks for your support, guys. Yes, we're fully aware that Channel 7, Channel 9 and other news media outlets are using our content. They um, always have been allowed to, providing that they at least give us some credit um, via our site and, and the people who send them in too. I have requested that. Um, I've been very busy with media, media calls from across the world today. Somehow they get my number. And um, it's been fairly hectic. 
we're starting to get a little bit worn out, but we'll be right. Plenty of coffee, and um, we'll we will continue to update Cyclone Marsha and XTC Marsha into southeast Queensland, providing many, many, many updates on our Facebook site. If they don't hit your news feed, we're sorry. We do not have the resources or capacity to answer all the questions. I'm urging you to go onto the page itself, then scroll down. Um, and obviously use official information such as BOM, EMQ, QFES, and have a look at a few other weather pages around as well. They throw up some um, various scenarios as an opinion. All right, guys, thanks for watching and stay safe. Bye for now.